Welcome, this is Shakti, online astrologer, and as you see, I'm living in paradise, Norway, so I'm very far away, which means I'm doing most of my work online, my forecast readings, my astrology, counseling, so uh, if you haven't done so, please sign up for your subscription, so you make sure you are kept in the loop for whatever upcoming uh, astrological uh, forecasts I'm preparing. Uh, I also love, love, love to hear back from you because it's kind of hard to keep this going if it's not some kind of a dialogue. And uh, I promise I will get back to you with whatever uh, comment you leave me. Welcome to my video about the upcoming solar eclipse in Pisces, which is a big deal. So in forecast astrology, we pay very close attention to the solar and lunar eclipses because they're so poignant turning points of completion and starting into something very new. So let's have a look at the specifics and you want to be aware of where it plays out in your chart. So the new moon, solar eclipse, is in 18 degrees Pisces, March 8 to 9, depending on where you are on the planet, uh, 5.54 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so you have to correlate it back or forward from, from there. So as usual, the transits of whatever nature they are, always depend on their individual impact on you, on how they fit into your chart and what gets activated in your horoscope. So just in general, I can tell you that people with the sun in mutable signs around 18 degrees will be very strongly impacted by the solar eclipse. And that uh, impact is going a lot further than just the week when it's happening. So some people say it's going to be half a year or months for that potential for upheaval and change in your life will be there. In addition to the uh, eclipse in Pisces, we also have all kinds of other planets uh, in Pisces. So there will be the Sun, Moon creating the eclipse and the new moon. Then there's Mercury, Neptune and Chiron later on in the month Venus will be moving in. And the South Node is in, in Neptune. So we have six planetary bodies or seven if you want to count Venus. And then there is a fact that Jupiter is in a position to the Sun-Moon eclipse. So there is a lot of action coming at us and uh, I want to go through all the potentials and what you can specifically do to write the Piscean energy because this is really what it is about. A little bit about me. My name is Shakti Karola Nevrin and uh, I'm very passionate about astrology. So I want everybody to have their own birth chart and uh, throw a love stone report on top of it when you sign up on my website. And I truly believe that you are born to thrive. So uh, as an astrologer for almost 40 years now, uh, I really, really, truly love astrology and know what it can do for you. And it is your astrological blueprint. And uh, with that, it's your road to karmic healing and true transformation and really um, take the high road of all the potentials you're bringing with you as a soul to this lifetime. So as an astrologer, I'm deeply committed to help you to understand yourself and uh, integrate all these uh, forecast readings I'm doing from that point. We are all coming in with a very specific blueprint, your personal birth chart, your horoscope, which is giving you directions in your life. And there are constantly transits coming through, impacting different uh, planets in your chart, activating specific inner aspects with that and areas in your life. So you're always living your chart. The question is on what level of potentiality are you able to express those planetary principles into your life? 
And as I see it, consciousness is really the deciding factor and the key how high end you can go with everything uh, you have at your hand. That's why I want you to have your personal birth chart. And if you sign up for my newsletter, I give you your free horoscope and a love stone report, which is based on your Venus in your chart. So uh, then you will be able to know where all the planets are and it will make so much more sense when we have transits coming up and uh, what I will discussing with you on my forecasts. Let's get back to the eclipse and what is actually happening. So a solar eclipse is always happening when there is a new moon. So that means the solar eclipse is happening when the moon is coming between the sun and the earth. So all those that, that gravity, that pull of those planets are pulling into one direction. And from the earth, the moon has the same kind of size as the sun has. So that's why it's possible to cover it up for however long that's happening. So it's quite impressive and, and impactful because, because uh, the gravity is pulling on us in a strong way. And it is happening in a specific sign which will give us specifics uh, how that pull impacts us, influences us and what we can do to, to weather this in the best way. And eclipses can therefore be compared to rebooting your consciousness, like you're rebooting your computer with new updates. You know, like your computer doesn't work somehow and you shut it down and it's restarted and, and then it suddenly works. So with eclipses, it's a little bit like that. So the solar eclipse kind of reboots your consciousness, your conscious mind. And the lunar eclipse reboots your inner world, your emotional set point, your unconscious drives and motivations. So this will be the first one out of four eclipses this year and the first, uh, first one out of three supermoons. And with the supermoons, um, the eclipses get really interesting. Even if this total solar eclipse will only be visible uh, to the naked eye in Indonesia and the Western Pacific, its energetic in, in impact and effects are felt globally and are further intensified by the fact that it's a supermoon. So a supermoon is when the moon is being at perigee, the closest approach of its monthly orbit around the Earth. So, so when the moon is the closest to the Earth, you can imagine that the electromagnetic field of the Earth and the people are, are strongly impacted. So the supermoon is pulling on the Earth plates, the tides, the tectonic plates, and um, of course the psyche, because the moon is so much connected to our inner world and how we feel ourselves in the world anyway. So this is huge. This is... Uh, big. Also, eclipses occur in 19-year cycles. So uh, that means on March 8, 1997, there was a solar eclipse at 18 degrees in Pisces. So if you want to get an idea what's going to happen for you this time around, uh, you can ask yourself uh, what happened in your life then. And what changes have you undergone at that time in your life? That will give you an idea what you can expect uh, this year. Here I have all the dates for you coming up. And uh, you can see that between the solar and the lunar eclipse, there are just a couple of weeks. This is because the solar eclipse is a new moon. And the lunar eclipse is a full moon and they are two weeks apart. So uh, that's why we usually have four eclipses throughout the year. The moon cycle, as we can see and observe it, uh, 
in the sky and how it connects back to our chart is really profound. And when we do forecast readings for individuals, it plays a big role in supporting you to decide on good timings for certain ventures in your life. So it is very worthwhile to follow the cycles of the moon throughout the months. First of all, to get started with your projects in the best way, but also to get more self-conscious and self-aware of what's going on inside of your inner world of feelings. And uh, then when we know who you are and we can tap deeper, more deeply into our potentials, then we have a higher possibility to, to express ourselves successfully out there in the world and manifest the way we want to. Therefore, we also pay a lot of attention in astrology to the moon position in your chart. So the moon describes your inner world of emotions, how you filter the world emotionally, uh, your need for security and safety and, and in a relationship, what you really need to feel comfortable. And therefore, it, the moon in your chart is also the source of joy and happiness. So, for example, uh, if you have a partner who kind of trines your moon uh, with his or her moon in your chart, then you can just be comfortable together and relax together. And that's definitely a good quality to have with somebody. So the moon is really very, very important. Well, and then the new moon or the solar eclipse is a chance for more emotional growth and integration of a new subject and it is defined by the sign it is in, which is with this upcoming solar eclipse in Pisces with all the other planets there. So I would say we have really, we better know a lot about Pisces and how to write this particular kind of wave coming at us. So I want to teach you a little bit about Pisces. And if you have any planets in your chart in Pisces, I'm sure you will appreciate the material besides uh, the time-sensitive actualizations for all of us. So Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. It's the last of the water signs. And we could say in general, Pisces is a sign where we learn about surrender, letting go, and transcending so that just means that we learn to connect with something which is bigger than our own ego identity and we connect with the invisible realms, with God, with the divine, with the ultimate consciousness. So, so this is why Pisces as a last sign of the zodiac really uh, connects us to something so much bigger. And in that, I think Piscean qualities are very comforting. When we talk about the ruler of Pisces, uh, we talk about Neptune. And Neptune is the archetype of the mystic. And the traditional ruler is uh, Jupiter. So um, I use Jupiter uh, more in the very personal, concrete aspects of uh, expressing the potentials of a sign. And Neptune is more the transpersonal uh, aspect of uh, the mystical aspect in us. Therefore, we look at Neptune representing Pisces as the spiritual seeker, the archetype of the hermit, the saint, sitting on the mountaintop, connecting with a deeper reality, something beyond our tiny little ego perspective. So here we also have the archetype of the dreamer, the poet, the seer, the visionary, or the artist. And what they all have in common, they prepare us to connect with something bigger than our tiny little ego and me, me, me perspective. And I found that very comforting, this perspective. So I always look at uh, the, the archetype or the, the, the image of um, a wave in the ocean as uh, symbolizing that as an individual, we are the wave, but in, simultaneously, we are part of the ocean. So we are the wave and we are the ocean. It just depends on our perspective we hold and our attachments. 
So Pisces uh, introduces us to the, the widened perspective to really look at our life from the perspective of the ocean. And from that perspective, we then can experience a sense of oneness, of unconditional love, of true empathy. And we feel inspired and connected and nurtured from something bigger than us. So in order to tap into the high potential of this Pisces solar eclipse, we need to make more time for meditation and connection with the divine than we might regularly um, create in our life. So take the solar eclipse as an invitation to really give your life some structure, some pattern where you just take time for that inner dimension to appear for you. The mood of Pisces brought into our life forcefully with this super moon, new moon eclipse, uh, it makes us more sensitive. It can also make us more attuned, more open, more loving, more empathic, humorous. Uh, but the sensitivity, uh, uh, I think, is a, is, a, is a good thing to open us to uh, other people's needs and, and perspectives. So it's really about looking at the world from a higher, more expanded state of consciousness. So the need and key for happiness for Pisces has to do with the ability to immerse themselves into the non-physical dimension of life, to take that perspective of being the ocean instead of cutting yourself off as being the top of the wave. So meditative trance time, uh, visionary imagination, allowing the kiss of the muse, uh, all these things where we get inspired, we open ourselves up for a higher potential, uh, uh, a higher dream of who we are and what we as an individual have to contribute as an individual wave to the ocean. So if we don't manage the Pisces high-end qualities of consciously connecting with that bigger sense of self, then we might end up with uh, manifesting the shadow aspects of Pisces. So for example, if you feel super sensitive, then there is a strong attraction to kind of counter that, to, to numb yourself out, to escape life. So here we have uh, the addict, uh, the escapism. Uh, can be, we can do escapism with, in many ways, with drugs, alcohol, work, sex. I mean, almost anything can, can be used as, as an addiction. So uh, also the Pisces shadow has to do with having no sense of self, no backbone. Uh, the helpless one, the lost soul, uh, just dreams, no action. So I think you're getting a real good, good feel for what the shadow possibilities of Pisces are. And uh, I hope it will guide you the coming months with the effects of the solar eclipse and Pisces to not go that road by consciously creating life, uh, time in your life to, to connect with something bigger and, and uh, give yourself the time to attune yourself uh, from the perspective of the ocean. And of course, as an evolutionary astrologer, I always want to look at the evolutionary goal because this is really what it is about. So if you have any planets in Pisces, it's really to, to disidentify with the ego, with the top of the wave. And it's really about surrendering to the divine, connect to that, that bigger sense of self. So in connection with Pisces, it's always a good question to ask, who are you and what is your dream you want to manifest ultimately in this life? So, uh, and what are the steps you take to get there? 
So to get clear, I always suggest to start a dream journal or morning pages to connect with, with those deeper layers inside of yourself. And if you have listened to my forecasts before, you know that uh, I suggest gemstones in order to help balance uh, challenging aspects uh, for a sign. So this month's birthstone for Pisces is Jade. So, of course, the first stone which comes to mind is Amethyst because it's a very pure uh, Piscean stone which connects to the crown chakra and opens us up to connect with those higher visions. But I want to introduce Jade this month around because it's a stone for the heart and it helps us to integrate that sense of oneness and connection and compassion and empathy through our heart and helps us to bring that quality to the world. As you might know, there are different stones for different signs. So you can only really know which is the best stone for your sun in Pisces or wherever your sun is, if you get your gemstone profile, which I uh, prepare based on your whole chart and where the planets are and how they connect us with each other. So then it will help you to really know which is the most impactful, supportive, truly healing birthstone for you. But just for general purposes, uh, Jade is definitely one of the beautiful stones for Piscean energies. And it's indeed a very healing stone. So the nourishment we feel with jade comes from a deep place inside of us, from our own inner being, from our own connection to the ocean, to our own spiritual true nature, which allows us to heal the heart of its wounds and grief. And as a result, jade helps you to value your own process of growth and transformation and to be more patient and compassionate with where you fall short. So if you haven't done so yet, now it's a good time to sign up for your free subscription on YouTube. Or if you really want to keep informed, you might uh, want to sign up for my newsletter. And there you will get access to your free horoscope, your birth chart and your free love stone report. And please, if you like my video, like it and leave me a comment so uh, it helps me to keep this going. So I know there's actually somebody out there who appreciates what I'm doing. So thank you for connecting with me. If you're really interested in astrology, i like you to know that I do teach astrology classes for beginners once in a while. So uh, it could be something you're interested to learn for your own inner process or to start a new career. Uh, either way, uh, connect with me, send me an email and I will let you know about the specifics and when the next training is going to start. As an evolutionary astrologer with 37 years of experience, I'm very passionate about astrology. You might be able to tell. And I truly believe that you are born to thrive and that your astrological blueprint is there to help you with your karmic healing and a profound transformation. And it's all happening in our consciousness. So if you're interested to have a look at your personal chart with me, give me a call. I'm in Hawaii, 808-878-8182, or head over to my website and connect with me there, mauiastrologyreading.com. Thanks for coming and listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like me and uh, I hope to see you soon again. And as we say here on Maui, Aloha!